<laughs> this is called E951. It is a dangerous carcinogenic neuro neurotoxic poison. Would anybody like any? <laughs> fellow, fellow Toastmasters, in December 1965, a chemist by the name of James Schlatter was working on ulcer medication for Searle Drug Company. By mistake, he invented something quite different. It was 200 times sweeter than sugar and had no calories. This was huge. In a world taking its first steps towards a preoccupation with weight loss, this was the holy grail of, diet, of dietary additives. But there were two problems. The first problem is to get this stuff put into food supplies, you need FDA approval, the Food and Drug Administration. The second problem is that this is made from methanol, which is poisonous, synthetic aspartic acid, which causes brain cancer, and synthetic phenylalanine, which is also a carcinogen. So it wasn't very likely that it was going to get FDA approval. But so we're not going to let public health get in the way of corporate profits. <laughs> so what they did is they comprised a series of tests, about a hundred of them, to prove that this was safe for human consumption. And in 1975, they submitted it to the FDA, and based on their recommendations, the FDA approved it for limited use in dry goods. They called it aspartame. You may know it as NutraSweet, equal the stuff in the little blue packet. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, if that stuff is really that dangerous, how could it possibly get FDA approval? Well, that's a very good question. And it's a question asked by a couple of guys. James Turner, who was a consumer advocate, and his colleague, Dr. Olney, they asked that same question. In fact, together, they delved into Searle's test results, and they discovered a few alarming things. They discovered that a lot of the test subjects, mostly monkeys and mice, suddenly died during the tests, and Searle never reported it. They discovered that a lot of the subjects developed lesions, seizures, brain tumors, and Searle didn't report it. What they even discovered is that some of the subjects that developed brain tumors, so were taking out of the test, surgically removing the tumors and putting them back in the tests as if nothing had happened. In short, they lied to the FDA, and by extension, they lied to the American public. Well, Turner and Olney ran to the FDA and told them what they discovered, and the FDA immediately did two things. They withdrew the approval for aspartame, rightly so, and they also asked the Justice Department to convene a federal grand jury to see if Searle could be criminally indicted. Now this was a bit of a problem for Searle, as you might imagine. They'd gone from being on the brink of having this wonder drug to having a useless product and being the subject of an investigation. Now how are they going to dig themselves out of this mess? They realized they were in deep, and they realized that this is not a problem that they could solve with their white-coated chemists. They needed some blue-suited politicians to get them out of this. In 1979, they went and hired one. Now, he didn't have a lot of business experience, and he had even less chemistry experience, but politically, he was very well connected. He'd served two terms in the House of Representatives. He'd been ex-Secretary of Defense. He'd been personal executive assistant to President Gerald Ford. And you might have heard of this guy. His name was Donald Rumsfeld. He made it his mission in life to get aspartame FDA approved. And he knew how to do that. Things started happening pretty quickly when he came on board. Within a couple of months, the guy who was heading up, the US attorney that was heading up the grand jury investigation, he resigned from the Justice Department and took a job in the private sector with an attorney's company who just happened to represent Searle. But Rumsfeld's big break came in 1981 when he was part of Ronald Reagan's transition team. Because that allowed him to pick the new FDA commissioner. And he picked a guy named Hayes. Now Hayes didn't really have any experience with nutrition or food additives. He knew a bit about drugs because he'd been developing a mind control drug for the Defense Department. But one of his first jobs when he took the FDA commissioner's lap was, of course, anybody? Approval. To approve aspartame for dry goods again. Now, his term at the FDA was not very successful. It lasted less than 18 months. In fact, he resigned under a cloud of suspicion amid allegations that he was trading corporate gifts for 
political favours. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> he went to work in the private sector for, the, for a public relations firm that happened to represent Searle. But before he left, he did something else. He, rep he approved aspartame for use in beverages, which put this stuff in almost every diet soda in the world. And for 30 years, this stuff has remained possibly the most dangerous food additive that we've consumed as human beings. In fact, aspartame complaints comprise the vast majority of consumer complaints to the FDA. So much so that the FDA has compiled a list of 93 symptoms associated with the consumption of aspartame, including nausea, irritability, insanity, deafness, blindness, weight gain, and death. Dementia, not only among our older population, but with everybody, learning disabilities in our youth have skyrocketed internationally since 1981. When we metabolize this stuff, every substance that it turns into is toxic to the human body and especially toxic to the brain, formaldehyde, formic acid, and methanol. And to date, the number of studies that show aspartame is directly responsible for poor physical and mental health outnumber the studies showing that it is safe by over 400 to zero. So, with that, only one final question. Do you really want to put this in your iced tea? Don't believe what I've said. Google aspartame plus rum cell, aspartame plus danger, aspartame plus anything, and you'll find this stuff out. Talk to your PTA, get it out of schools. We don't need diet sodas in schools. Talk to everybody you know. Spread the word. This stuff is bad news. Don't take it. And I'm done. Thank you.